Hi everyone and welcome to another video for Agricultural Engineering 213. So today we're going to look at drainage and we're going to start looking at calculations to plan how far apart you want to space your different drains in your field. So in order to calculate that we're going to have to start with the drainage factor. And drainage factor is uh, the symbol Q and that is in meters per day or as we're going to use it in millimeters per day. So the amount of water in millimeters to be removed from the soil through a drainage system within 24 hours and it determines the spacing and capacity. So that is drainage factor. So if you're going to look at the letter Q and um, that will then be if you've got a piece of soil and you have a crop on that piece of soil then uh, you're going to have some irrigation and if this is wet everything there is wet you need to calculate um, the amount of water that has to be removed in millimeters so that's the height um, how much water how many millimeters to re be removed in 24 hours and that is the drainage factor and that drainage factor should be between 5 and 15 millimeters a day. So Q equals F times the month of the year with the most rain in that month. So in the Cape, that will be July, the month with the most rain divided by the amount of days in that month, uh, 31 or 30, depending on the month and then multiply it by two and that will give you um, the drainage factor for your soil so the only thing that you need to be able to calculate your drainage factor is the month with the most rain in and the amount of millimeters of rain that you had in that month divided by the days in the month to give you um, amount of rain per day and then if so if is going to depend on the kind of soil that you have and it's a constant so if you look at this slide if you have a sandy kind of soil then f will be 0 0,8 if you have a loamy kind of soil it will be 0 0,7 and if you have clay or silt kind of soil it will be 0 0,5 so it's one of those three it's either 0 0,8 0 0,7 or 0 0,5 and here's a, a small example. So in July, you have 150,5 millimeters of rain on a loam soil, and you want to calculate what your drainage factor is. So how many millimeters do you need to drain per day? And what you do is you'll take, so to calculate F, you need to know it's on a loam soil. So you go to this table and you see F for loam is 0 0,7 so you will put that 0 0,7 in there for F uh, the amount of rain you had millimeters you had 150,5 millimeters and July has 31 days in the month multiply by that too and that will get you 0 0,00680 meters per day or you can just convert that into 6,80 millimeters per day. And that is how you calculate Q. So when you have calculated Q and you know how much um, water you need to remove from your soil, that's not the only thing. Um, that is just something you use. So this Q drainage factor is just something you use in the larger picture. Another thing that you use is Darcy's law. So what does Darcy's law say? And if we had to uh, break this up into a simpler form, he said the flow of water through a column of sand per unit time. So um, if this is our column of sand. So we have a pipe with sand in it and Water is throwing from the bottom downwards. 
So you've got water that's flowing down through this whole column that has sand in inside of it. And um, the rate at which this water is moving through this pipe uh, is proportional to the cross section of the column. So how quickly the water is going to move through is dependent on this cross section. Uh, this distance cross section of the column of sand and the difference in pressure head inversely proportional to the length of the column. So the difference in pressure head is just the pressure applied uh, from the top to the water. And that's Darcy's law. So if you had to put that in a formula, you would say um, that pressure head or the distance times the cross-sectional, so this distance, um, K being your soil type, so maybe a sand or um, loam or clay, which brings in drainage factor, and then Q is the rate at which water moves through, and then length being the length of the, the whole column. Okay, so this is then just a picture to, to give you an idea. Um, you can see on this picture the, the difference in pressure head is going to be, there's going to be more pressure at the top than at the bottom because of gravity, more pressure is applied. Okay, so using this law, uh, that's how we start determining how far we need to space the drains below the soil surface apart. So your total soil depth, uh, deeper soil under the drain allows more space for water to flow. So what this is, is uh, you have got two different soil scenarios. You've got this one, we call that number one, and this one, number two. It's two different examples. And in number one, you can see that the, the two drains are on top of an impermeable layer whereas in example two the impermeable layer is deeper down than in example one and so because it's deeper down in example two you can space your drains further apart because there's more space underneath to allow the water to um, stay at that position whereas in this one the water will just accumulate and stay over there on top of the water on top of the impermeable layer and uh, you need more drains to make sure that your water table isn't too high to influence your roots uh, the flow area enlarge with the great result of greater flow through so the spacing of the drains could therefore be increased for the same flow drain depth uh, the same thing counts here when you have two different examples this example and this one and over there your drain is a lot deeper than it is in the first example what that means is um, because it's deeper there's a lot more space for your water table and so you can space your two drains further apart than in the first example then dry depth um, what this refers to is you have this space between your soil surface and your water table so and this one and you need that dry depth because if you've got roots underneath the soil surface then you need a dry area for oxygen for your soil roots so you've got two different examples example one and example two and when your dry depth is bigger so you have a lot more space then you will need to space your drains closer to each other and then um, if your dry depth isn't that deep then you can space it further apart and this will also have an influence if you installed another drain in the middle then this water table would obviously be lower so permeability water moves easier through soil with a higher permeability uh, with the result that spacing can be increased for the same flow. So if you've got two different kinds of soils and example one is a sandy soil and example two is a clay type of soil because 
your permeability is high so water can move more easily through a sandy kind of soil than a clay soil you'll have to install more drainage pipes closer to each other than in the second example where you had a soil with a low permeability so just to conclude then when your space L is too wide so this is the spice the space between the two different drains when the L is too wide the water table will rise too high in the rainy season so you've got two drains and if they are very high or very far from each other then your water table will be higher than when you had another drain installed and you would then have a lower water table when L is too small um, you will it will drain efficiently efficiently but a higher cost so you'll pay more than you need to be paying if the quantity and flow patterns is uncertain the system is designed for poor situations but only every second pipe is laid in the first year and then in the next year after looking at um, what's happened in your soil over that year then you can uh, think about installing a second pipe and um, these are the factors that influences spacing your permeability so how quickly water moves through the soil, your soil depth, uh, your minimum dry depth, and then your drain depth. And then that, uh, that influences calculating how far you space your drains apart. So this is the kind of um, sketch we'll be using from now on onwards. Um, and everything that you will need to be able to calculate your drainage spacing is over there. I think the only important things to know uh, for now is K then, K1 and K2. K refers to the permeability of your soil. So the kind of soil that you are working with. Uh, L is the spacing. So how far are these two drains spaced apart? D is the distance from your impermeable layer to the drain. Um, B being the distance from the drain to the swell surface. A being basically your, your dry, uh, dry depth. And then H being the height from the groundwater midway uh, between two drains. So uh, this is just to show you that if you are installing a drain underneath the soil surface between two different drains, your your water table isn't completely flat it will be uh, lower closer to the drain and higher in the middle between two drains and uh, that is it for this video